So finding the Exodus Moses in Egypt, it stands the reason there would be some remains in Egypt of Moses' time there. Well, there is. Definitely check out my part one Hebrew video for the timeline of the Exodus. I want to share this one with you family. As we go over Moses in Egypt like you may have never seen before. So let's discover the identity of Pharaoh's daughter who adopted him, matching the Bible and semi-ancient historians with the walls of Egypt. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the river side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And in those days, their mother, the daughter of Pharaoh, came in order to bathe in the river. And she heard your voice as you were crying, and she sent her maids to fetch you, and they brought you to her. Thermuthis was the king's daughter. She was now diverting herself by the banks of the river, and seeing a cradle borne along by the current, she sent some that could swim, and directed them to bring the cradle to her. Amenophis, which is a variation of the word Amenhotep, 31 years, whose daughter Theramuk, in the 26th year of his reign, took the infant Moses out of the water and adopted him as her son, after which this Amenophis reigned five years. So we're seeing a common theme from the Book of Jubilees to these historians that the Pharaoh's daughter is a variation of the name we see here. And we're finding out from this historian that her father was Amenhotep. So let's find out who Amenhotep was to find out who her daughter was, the one who adopted Moses. And then let's find out who Moses was in Egypt. Okay, so we're going to match what we just read and the Bible, Jubilees, and the semi-ancient historians with the walls of Egypt and these inscriptions that are over 3,000 years old. So from this museum, is talking about Amenhotep. He's got a laundry list of titles. Lord of Amat, Mantu, etc. Mantu, keep this in mind. Okay, so now this is from this uh, archaeologist right here, and this is his book, and this is what it states. It says all these blocks of Amenhotep were found in several locations at Karnak, in the so-called Mantu Temple at North Karnak. So we see that there is a connection with Amenhotep I and Mantu. Let's look a little further into this. Now, this is from the DBpedia. This is what Mantu means. It says Mantu was a falcon god of war in the ancient Egyptian religion, an embodiment of the conquering vitality of the Pharaoh. He was particularly worshipped. And then it goes on to talk about what it's talking about. But Mantu is basically like the a deity. He's like an alter ego of the Pharaoh. When he's in his conquering mode. That's what they called it. He's like he's an alter ego. So keep all that in mind. Now this is an archaeologist. And this is her book. And you know she's from the Institute of Archaeology. And this is what she says in page 38. At Deir el Medina. The tomb workers village. On the west bank. Where the deified Amenhotep I. And his mother, Amis Nefertari, you know, and it talks about their best known as, as patriot deities. They're known as deities. So it's important to understand that Amenhotep was known as a deity. So if he had children, they'd be known as deities too. But if you think of his children, the way they're depicted in Egypt to be known as regular people, you're going to think they have no children at all, which is not the case. 
they actually did have children Amenhotep and his his wife so the name Thermuthis who Jubilees and the Semanachian historians all state was the woman who adopted Moses the Egyptian translation of that name is Renetutet so let's look and find out some things about Renetutet by this Egyptologist here and we see the meaning of the word and it means she belongs to the name she rejoices she brings up it says brings up again foster nurse begat she who brings up foster again nursed snake so we see that she is a mutt deity mutt means mother she's a foster mother deity okay so we're going to be reading from this translation from this archaeologist and egyptologist and it states the divine birth ritual is performed for her and the entire land is illuminated festival is throughout egypt the renetunet festival is celebrated for her within the palace so for mutt or mother renetunet who is foster mother deity it's within the palace and it says and in the entire land likewise from when the sun disc which means the sun sets on the last day of parmathi until the first day of shamu one pachans her majesty then appears in procession as the good renetunet so her majesty is talking about an actual woman because her majesty talks about monarchs so an actual woman princess or queen uh, appears as the personification of renetunet like a werewolf scene you know she automatically just transformed so we're gonna find out who this woman was and we see that that's what her majesty means talking about monarchs so keep all that in mind now we see that there is a statue of Sinemet and we're gonna go from this archaeological source here and it states in the inscription to be in the temple of Mutt mistress of Ashuru Ashuru is a river and this is the same river that's in the temple where that woman was transformed or appeared as a personification of Renetunet. so we're going to be reading from this archaeologist this Egyptologist this archaeologist who translated this inscription here we're going to read about Sinemnet and it says high steward of the king Sinemnet revered with the great god he supports Hathor, who's a calf deity, permanent of Thebes, Mutt, Lady of Ashuru. Ashuru is a river. And we know that Mutt had several adopted children like Kansu. But it says that he caused her to appear. So Sinemna caused her to appear and displays her beauty on behalf of life. So Sinemna caused her to become beautiful. So let's read again because we're reading about what happened during that ceremony. And this is the back pillar it says about Renetunet. It says the steward of Amun, Sinemnet. He supports Renetunet of the granary of divine offerings to Mantu, Lord of Amant. We know the Mantu being Amenhotep at this time. He causes her appearance. So remember when the woman who was called Her Majesty, an unnamed woman, who becomes the personification of Renetunet begin the scoop that what caused her appearance was in fact Sinemnet right in this column is literally stating that on this statue of Sinemnet that he caused their appearance so let's skip down here to where it says on um, around the base section 5 it says may she grant the Fau provisions that are in Lower Egypt to the sole companion and overseer of the double granary of Amun Sinemnet. So she's making provisions for Sinemnet that are in Egypt and everything and, and taking care of them. And we know that this has got to be the beginning of Sinemnet's life because he spent a lot of his life in Egypt. And it also acknowledges 
synonym that's parents because it says on section eight top of the base column it says begotten by ramos and born of the lady of the house hath nefer justified may she grant everything that comes forth from upon the offering table of mantu in armant for the steward of amun synonym so we see that she adopted Sinemnet and she acknowledged that he had actual parents, but she took care of him, introduced him into Egyptian lifestyle. And we read here also by Renetin that she takes the form of a cobra. And we see here that she shares equal billing with Hatshepsut and she's also called August Lady of Armant. And we notice that Amenhotep was called Lord of Amman. So let's stop here because we're going to find out who this woman was. Let's stop here and let's tally up what we got so far. So, so far we got. So far we have as far as Egypt, we have Amenhotep and we see that he was actually deified him and his mother. So we also have Renetunet who is a foster mother deity. And we found out that there's this unnamed woman, her majesty, who, who is who she's referred to as, who during a ceremony, like a werewolf thing, she becomes the personification of Renetunet. So whoever this woman was, she decides to provide and give provisions for Sinimnet and adopt him and also acknowledges Sinemnet's actual biological parents. So that's what we got so far. So we're gonna advance and we're gonna find out who that woman was. So this is from the Encyclopedia of Egyptology. It says, in ancient Egypt, an individual's name was of vital importance for defining his identity in society and assuring his survival for prosperity. A person might have two or even three names, one of them sometimes being a Basiliforous name, a name that incorporates the king's name adopted by the individual at a certain stage in life. So they get this at the certain stage of life when they fulfill their names, meaning they advance to the new name. So the fact that whoever this woman was adopted the name Renetunet. And she advanced by ceremony means that she must have fulfilled her name, original name's purpose. So by taking this into account, we can look at other things in conjunction with this to find out who this woman was, according to Egyptian culture. So this is Amenhotep the first. This is the chronology of the kings. This is Amenhotep and his predecessor, which was... Uh, uh, I'm Amos and Thutmose the first. We got both of them here. So Thutmose reigned after Amenhotep the first. And we read from this Oxford Handbook of Egyptology that Thutmose is not the son of Amenhotep the first and his exact relation, if any, to the family of his predecessor is unknown. At least one of Thutmose's two known wives, Mut No Fret, was the daughter of Amenhotep. So, if at the time when Thutmose is going in to marry uh, Mut No Furt and her name is the king's daughter, and the king at that time would have been Amenhotep the first, we know that that woman is the daughter of Amenhotep the first. Just proving that Egypt that Egyptologists or archaeologists point. So this is from another professor of Egyptology and archaeology. And just to confirm that it is an inscribed that she is, in fact, the king's daughter. It says an inscription at Karnak where a lady named Mut No Fret is described as king's daughter. So let's see what this woman's name means. It means Mut is beautiful. And we see throughout the ceremony, it's all talking about Mut becoming beautiful. Renetunet becoming beautified by Sinemnet. She fulfilled her name's meaning. And also, 
it states that the woman was Egyptian royalty. And we know that during, obviously, Amenhotep's time, a woman who was Egyptian royalty would have been much no fret because she was his daughter. So we also, in addition to that, there's actually a pictograph of Mutnofret and uh, a snake woman, which is how Renetunet appears, doing some type of ritual. So this shows clearly that Mutnofret is the one, in fact, that adopted Sinemnet. So this whole scenario does match with what's in the Bible. So what we got to do now is we're going to address the commonalities and similarities between what is said about Sinemna or Moses in the Bible and by semi-ancient historians. And we're going to match that up with inscriptions in Egypt that are over 3000 years old. Let's do it. OK, so this is from this source here, from this archaeologist, from this book. In this page 239 born a commoner Sinemna so him being a commoner matching Moses also not being a native Egyptian and it says from the Bible and when she had opened it she saw the child and behold the babe wept and she had compassion on him and said this is one of the Hebrews children and this says Renetunet gave each newborn baby a secret name along with its mother's milk in this role, she was given the epithet, she who rears. So she was giving them their mother's milk. Now it says here, then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. So she got her mother to do it. Just like Retinet, perfect match. This historian here uh, states a quote and he says, How Moses made war with the Ethiopians. And you can read this whole account and it also says the Ethiopians, it specifies that these are the Ethiopians who are the next neighbors to the Egyptians. Now that's significant because below each so called Egypt is Nubia. So Moses made war with the Nubians. Let's see the match. Let's look at some archaeology in Egypt about Sinemna that matches what first century historian Josephus said about Moses going to war with Nubia. So this is from Archeomi, an archaeological site in Italy. And these words are translated from Italian to English. The Archeomi electoral team was born in October 2018 by the will of the director Francisco Torito. It is made up of specialized archaeologists, professionals in the cultural sector of the communication and tourism. Archeomi is a cultural journal registered with the court of Messina with serial number and it lists the serial number there, as well as a popular science magazine. And it lists the codes there and is registered with the CNR of Rome. So that's the source as archaeologists like him and what this source states is Sinemnut had participated in military expeditions in Nubia and had been rewarded with the bracelet Menefert he who beautifies so Moses had an expedition to Nubia and Sinemnut had an expedition to Nubia. Perfect match. Now the fact that Sinemna's bracelet is inscribed he who beautifies implies it was definitely given to him by his adopted mother who was beautified by him who associates herself with a snake that doesn't poison but nurtures. Now keep that in mind. So from this historian we see that Moses also had a bracelet like Sinemna. And it's from the 1500s, this book here, this page 162, it says Moses locked the bracelet and it says Flesga. He had on his own arm round the neck of Gaydal. 
So Moses also had a bracelet. And it says on 162, noble bracelet bear. So if you look at this whole page and read this whole account, it does have to do with the snake. And Moses tells the person he gives the bracelet that there will be no poisonous creatures in the land that you go to. So there's a connection there. And another connection with Moses and Sinemna from this encyclopedia says the Egyptian temple, there are two main classes of priests. The higher class of priests was the Hemnedger, and then it says God's servant. That's what that means. So, an inscription from Sinemna, it says, I have access to all the writings of the Hemnedger. This is a Sinemna inscription. And it says, I was the greatest of the great in the whole land. I was the guardian of the secrets of the king in all his places. This is Acts 7.22 and it says, And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. No commoner except Sinemnet was reported in Egypt to be learned in all Egyptian wisdom. The Bible says Moses was learned in all Egyptian wisdom. Another perfect match. Yet another connection with Moses and Sinemna. This author here, this historian, archaeologist here. The book, Mistress of the House, page 31. It was discovered among the funerary offerings in the 18th dynasty tomb of Sinemna's parents. Inside a basket bunched together with a knotted pot sling was a linen pad with rolls of long pow on one side. Now, why would there be a basket in Sinemnut's parents' tomb? Now, wait a minute. Wasn't Moses found in a basket? So these two blankets in this linen sheet was found inside the basket like a cradle set up and we see that Josephus describes it as a cradle borne along by the current so that's another perfect match now let's look at another match with Moses body because it was never found even to this day it wasn't found now let's look at what Sinemna has as far as his body his tomb so this is an archaeological source here you see the book the page 132 it says the real mystery is why Sinemna was never buried in the magnificent tomb prepared for him so he wasn't buried in the tomb that's another perfect match and so this is another archaeological source it's possibly during the Ramsid period when a number of Sinemna's monuments were repaired so when they were repaired they weren't around Sinemna so how do you really look a lot of remakes so here's how we can find out how he really appeared by looking at his parents Ramos and Hat North for the parents of prominent 18th dynasty court officials Nimnut Ramos and Hat Nofer's tomb was discovered intact by archaeologist uh, Shaquille Abdel El Cornar the object is now displayed in the metropolitan Metropolitan Museum of Art, New York. So, from that same museum, these archaeologists who have access to the bodies of Sinemnut's parents to do anthropological, archaeological, and DNA studies, they came to this conclusion in Sinemnut on this page. And it says the Nubian Sinemnut. So, based on this, an accurate sculpture that was made with the inscription of Sinemna would be this one. This would be Sinemna. And as you can see, he looks just like any African American or West African. The features are there. And from there, with the Israelites, they came to Sinai to get the commandments 
from the Most High Yah Himself. By Hashem Yahweh Shai. So we see the connection with those two inscriptions in Sinai, how it describes the people in Sinai as being formerly slaves. And the second inscription describes them as worshiping a calf deity. Obviously, those two actually reflect what's in the Bible. An additional connection would be the fact that Sinemnet was in the process of making a temple for Hepshepsut dedicated to the calf deity Hathor. And then we're going to name that temple Holies of Holies. But Sinemna never finished it. So we can see how that archaeology connects with the story of the Bible. Because Sinemna is like, I let go of that calf deity. You guys need to let go of it too. But they didn't let it go. And you see what they were called? A stiff necked people meaning stubborn and when Moses kept on telling them to not worship the calf he was really really adamant about that he also set up the holies of holies dedicated to the supreme deity Yahweh see how that connects Look, look up there, somebody is up there. Hey Zephora, what is happening? It's Moses, Moses came back with the commandments a second time. The people said something is happening. The chariots and angels of the Lord are among us. Come, let us go hear Moses. I perceive we will be telling of this moment for many days to come, even for thousands of years. And I perceive you are right. Moses is holding up the commandments. Moses, what, what do we do, Moses? What happens now? Moses. And it shall come to pass, thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Serve and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day. But the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flock of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy blood and thy soul. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. 
The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way, and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses, and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee an holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee. And thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. Thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. The Lord shall make thee the head, and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee. The chariots of God are twenty thousand, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place.